So we got here rules on electronic evidence. Let's define definition of terms. Anyway, scope muna. Uh, electronic data message applies to all civil actions and proceedings as well as face judicial and administrative and specifically covered by the rules of court. Definition of terms, symmetric or public crypto system means of get, generating a secure pair via digital uh, signature and public key business records includes records of any business institution so association profession okay occupation etc so, parang logbook siya. certificate means an electronic document to support the digital signature so in this way hindi siya papel support the digital signature which purports to confirm the identity of the other significant persons holds a particular key pair Okay, so electronic certificate siya. Computer, uh, first to any single or interconnected device or apparatus, blah, blah, blah. Okay, digital signature refers to an electronic signature consisting of a transformation of the electronic document. This is very basic. Uh, was created using a private key or initial electronic document has been opened. What does it mean by digitally signed? It refers to an electronic data bearing a digital signature. Okay, electronic data message refers to the sent or received by electronic, optical, or similar means, probably an email. Electronic document, uh, on the other hand, refers to information. Uh, this uh, established or a written expression, received, recorded, transmitted, you know, ref, uh, which reflects the electronic data message or the document. The term electronic document may be used interchangeably with electronic data message. Okay? So for the purposes of this act, they are interchangeable. The difference is that uh, the data message here, sent to receiver, stored by electronic means, and, well, pareho pa rin, which is received, recorded, transmitted. Uh, it's just that probably because this is not a paper document. Um, data message may be the email. The electronic document is a printed copy, digital printed copy of that, right? Because it refers to the information of information, data, symbols, or other modes of written expression, okay? Electronic. That's why naman can be used interchangeably. Okay. First, electronic key. 
protects passwords, secret code which secures and defends sensitive information. E-signature refers to any distinctive mark in electronic form. It's just like a signature. An electronic uh, signature includes digital signature. So electronic signature is a general term that you logically associated with electronic data or document. Ephemeral, electronic communication. Ano ba ephemeral? Let's find out. Versa telephone conversation, text message, chat rooms, messenger, streaming video, and other electronic forms of communication which is not recorded or retained. What is what does it mean by ephemeral? Okay, lasting for a very short time. Ephemeral. Okay. So, just uh, what we flash message, uh, call, uh, temporary a telephone conversation of which it is not recorded recorded or retained. Okay. Information communication system refers to a system for generating, storing, otherwise any other electronic data and documents in the computer system. Key pair. A symmetric crypto system refers to the private key, mathematical, etc. The latter can verify the digital signature that the former creates. Okay, so this verifies that you're the one who created the uh, digital signature, private key, Refers to the key pair used to create a digital signature in public. Refers to the key used to verify. Okay, these are computer terms. Verify a digital signature. Or well, the private one refers to the key of a key pair to create. So private is the creation, and the public is to the verification. Uh, how will this law be constructed? Uh, it's, uh, so, sorry, to be construed rather, not constructed to assist the parties in obtaining just and mm -hmm. speedy, speedy choose. And an expensive determination of cases. Okay. Other uh, shall also take into consideration the Electronic Commerce Act. Okay. Liberally construed. Alicia strictly construed. Malaya. Okay. Electronic documents. Rule three. Uh, whenever a rule of evidence refers to the term of writing document, instrument or uh, memorandum, any form of writing such term shall be deemed to include an electronic document. As defined in these rules. Okay, so equivalent in digital copies into, uh, you know, the the, the document we're, we're presenting, just like the paper document. Admissibility. Um, it is admissible. Even complies if it complies with the rules on admissibility. Same with the physical documents. Privilege communication. Uh, it's a confidential character privilege. Uh, not solely in the ground that this form of electronic document. Okay, still in the confidential character of which uh, things uh, should not be recorded. Uh, let us define privilege communication. Conversations made during the confidential interaction between two parties. Parties by law must fall into classification of uh, entitled to a private and protected relationship. Okay. The best evidence rule, rule number four. So this refers to the uh, original documents must be presented. An electronic document shall be regarded as the equivalent of the original document under the best evidence rule. What about the copies? Copies as equivalent of the originals when a document is in two or more copies executed at the same time with identical contents. So what happens? Such copies or duplicates shall be regarded as equivalent to the original. Notwithstanding the foregoing, copies and duplicates shall not be admissible to the same extent as the original if. A genuine question was raised as to the authenticity, and in the circumstances, just it would be unjust or inequitable to admit a copy in view of the original. But most likely, how would you say it's a copy in the digital? Like, would you copy paste you and to make it a, a duplicate, right? But there are only two grounds to assail it: genuine question, assailing the authenticity, and any unjust uh, or inequitable uh, reason to admit a copy. Uh, alteration, second copy, probably. Rule 5, authentication of electronic documents. The burden of proving authenticity. Who has the burden? The person seeking to introduce an electronic document in any legal procedure has the burden of proving it. So, if we come on the present ng evidence as to the authenticity, you need to prove that the e-document uh, is authentic. And what is the manner of authentication for any private electronic document offered as authentic is received in evidence its authenticity must be proved by any of the following means. Number one, by evidence that it's, it has been or it had been digitally signed by the person to have signed the same. By the evidence that other appropriate security procedures 
as authorized by the court or by law were applied to the document and by other evidence showing its integrity and reliability to the satisfaction of the judge. So it's a discretion of the judge to honor it. So what matters is the letter A, no? by evidence that it, it had been digitally signed by the person. How do you prove that, right? That, uh, that person you know, is the one who signed and made the digital signature. Uh, you can also prove that using see other evidence, you know, maybe the consistency of the digitally signed documents kung yung talaga yung gitu gamit niya, right? Or do you have evidence na talagang sinay niya yun uh, uh, using the digital pen, okay? Proof of ano to, electronically notarized document. A document electronically notarized shall be considered as public document and prove as notarial document under the rules of court. So, electronically notarized document is still valid. Okay, under the rules on electronic evidence. Electronic signature. Yung patatorio ko sabi nila, bawal daw yung digital signature. But the, the rules on evidence, the rules on electronic evidence was telling us an electronic signature or digital sin signature authenticate in the manner prescribed uh, here under in this law is admissible in evidence as the functional equivalent equivalent of the signature of a person on a written document. So valid ang isang electronic signature under rule 6 of the rules on electronic evidence. So, Mali sinasabi ng nagnonotaryo, mga sekretarya lang, na hindi tatanggapin ng digit, digital signature. The rules of court provides the rules on uh, electronic evidence as for this administrative uh, matter of the Supreme Court. Eh, in honor of electronic signature. So, remember, Rule 6, Section 1. And how do you authenticate the electronic signature? May be authenticated in the following by evidence the method or process was utilized to establish a dig digital signature. So maybe a pen, okay? By any other means provided by law, it's very generic. And by any other means satisfactory to the judge, establishing the genuineness. This is very discretionary. So it's always the what is provided by the law, what satisfies the judge, and to prove you know, that the process was uh, established using a digital signature. So what about taking a picture of the person uh, using the pen and uh, the uh, digital pad? One could be the example. Section 3 would be disputable presumptions in relation to the electronic signature. When it has been deemed to be authenticated, it shall be presumed that the electronic signature is that of a person to whom it correlates. Okay? The electronic signature was affixed by the person with the intention of authenticating or approving the electronic document to which it is related. Or the uh, such person's consent to the transaction embodied therein, the methods or processes utilized to affix or verify Verify the electronic signature operated without fault or error. So in case of a dispute, you know, in the presumption as to the authenticity of the electronic signature, okay, it shall be presumed there is a presumption that the e-signature correlates to that person, it was affixed by that person, and the method uh, was without error. You know, if we have the presumption of innocence, that's also the same with the presumption of the electronic signature. We go to uh, section 4. Uh, the disputes relating to the digital signature. So electronic signature is the general term. Um, can include the passwords or something, but digital signature, you know. So what about the dispute, the disputes there? The disputes there. The information contained is in the certificate is correct. Uh, the digital signature was created during the operational period of a certificate. The message associated with the digital signature has not been altered from the time that it was signed. Of course, in the Photoshop, and the certificate had been issued by the certification authority indicated there. So if, if they, they were older, authorized, they represent a certificate of appreciation by some uh, speaker, then that authority, authority sizing body you know, has the right to issue that. Okay? For letters A and B, letter A says the certificate is correct, the information is correct, and that the digital signature was created during the period that the certificate is being made. Now, let's speak about Rule 7, the evidentiary weight of uh, the electronic evidence. So, factors for assessing the, the weight. In assessing the evidentiary weight, the following factors may be considered. The reliability of the manner or method in which it was generated, stored, or communicated. Not limited to input and output procedures, controls, tests, and checks for accuracy and reliability of the electronic message. In light of all the circumstances as well, the relevant agreement. So, how explain it? The reliability on the method it was generated. Okay? The reliability in which its originator was identified. The integrity of the information. 
in how it was recorded or stored, not limited to hardware and computer so, uh, software, the familiarity of the witness who made the entry with the communication, of course, if, if he's really the one, the nature and quality of the information which went into the communication is really important as to, to solve the case, and factors that which court may consider as affecting the accuracy or integrity of the document, what dash cam videos, for example, right, or recorded videos. Integrity of uh, an information communication system. In any dispute involving the integrity of the information uh, is recorded, the court may consider the following, whether the information was operated in a manner that did not affect the integrity of the document, whether the electronic document was stored by the party to the proceedings with interest adverse to the party in the manner of storage, and whether the electronic document was recorded in the usual and ordinary course of business where a person is not part of the proceedings. It's like a third party. That's how you assess the integrity. The manner is very important. Um, rule 8, business records as the exception to the hearsay rule. Section 1, in, in applicability of the hearsay rule. Memorandum, report, or record of data uh, made by electronic means at the time of the transmission, blah, blah, blah. Kept in regular course of conduct. All of which are shown by the testimony of the custodian or other qualified witnesses is exempted from the rule of hearsay evidence. It is not a hearsay. No. Um, it is being now considered by Rule 8. Right? If any records of this are exempted to the hearsay evidence. So overcoming the presumption. The presumption provided for Section 1 may be overcome by evidence of the untrustworthiness of the source of information. The Telegram Peking website or whatever. Let's define the hearsay rule. Okay, here it says a statement of person uh, made by the declar declarant while testifying at the trial. A statement is an oral statement. What example of hearsay rule? The court must hear from the person themselves to consider it as evidence. For example, if you're a witness, you cannot give the following evidence. My mother told me she was she saw the case at 3 p.m. This is evidence of statement made out of court, and is hearsay. Eh, sinabi lang pala sa'yo, hindi ikaw ang first hand na nakakita. That's what you call the hearsay evidence. And we're saying in rule number 8, rule eight that the hearsay evidence is uh, not applicable in this. Why? Uh, it was just uh, stated by the court in section 1, all of which are shown by the testimony of the custodian or qualified witness. It's because of it, the, the different nature of its uh, recording. It was... Uh, digitally recorded right? because it supplies uh, you know, information by the knowledge of the person, regular course of conduct, and it was evidence. It cannot be retracted. You know, it's a video. And, nasabi ay nasabi na. and if you want to overcome the presumption, you must say the unworthiness of the source. Okay. Let's go to rule uh, 9. So how many rules are there? Until rule 11. Right, because Rule 12 is just the effectivity clause. Method of proof. So, affidavit, Section 1 says affidavit of evidence. All matters relating to the admissibility and the weight of the evidence may be established by affidavit, stating facts of direct personal knowledge. Okay, you have to execute that affidavit by the affiant based on the authentic records. The affidavit must affirmatively show the competence of the affiant to testify on the matters contained in and the cross-examination of the deponent. The affiant shall be made to affirm the contents of the affidavit. So, yung affiant, yung deponent. And maybe cross-examined as a matter of fact by the adverse party. Let us define deponent as we learned in rules on civil procedure. Okay. In their deposition. Yeah. Deponent. Okay. A person who makes a deposition or affidavit under the oath. Okay. Rule 10. Examination of witness. In an electronic testimony, right? After summarily hearing the parties pursuant to Rule 9 of this rule, the court may authorize the presentation of testimonial evidence by electronic means or at a video call. Before so, authorizing the court shall determine the necessity for such presentation in prescribed terms and conditions as may be necessary. The transcript of electronic testimony, uh, when examination of a witness is done electronically, the entire proceedings, including the question and answer, shall be transcribed by a stenographer or any, by, by any other recorder uh, authorized for the purpose who shall certify as correct the transcript done by him. The transcript should reflect the fact that the proceedings, either in full or part, has been electronically recorded. It must be uh, specified. 
the storage of electronic evidence, the evidence and recording thereof, as well as the stenographic no shall form part of the records of the case. So such recordings will be deemed prima facie evidence of such uh, proceedings. Hmm? Consider it even the stenographic notes uh, uh, of, of what has transpired in the electronic evidence is, is, is deemed recorded in the case. Uh, rule 11, the last one, before the effectivity. Um, audio, photographic, video, and ephemeral evidence. So audio, video, and similar evidence. Audio, photographic, and blah, 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 video. Acts or transactions shall be admissible provided, provided it shall be shown. Presented or displayed to the court and shall be identified, explained, or authenticated by the person who made the recording or by some other person competent to satisfy the accuracy thereof. There must be a testimony, you know, uh, of the person who actually captured the, the electronic evidence. The ephemeral electronic communication. So it in temporary shall be proven by the testimony of a person who was a party of the same or his personal knowledge. In the absence of unavailability of such witness, other competent evidence may be admitted. A recording of the telephone conversation or ephemeral electronic uh, communication shall be covered by the immediately preceding section. Mm. What's this in effectivity? No, no, preceding. So, section one. Uh, it shall be covered by section one. You know, telling it's admissible. If the foregoing communication are recorded or embodied in an electronic document, then the provisions of Rule 5 shall apply. What is the provision on Rule 5? So burden of proving it and that's it. You know, it's the effectivity takes effect on the first day of August two thousand one, following their publication before twentieth of July two thousand one. Two newspapers of general circulation. Okay. So this was in Chief Justice Hilario De Vito. Okay, tagal na pala nito. Huh? Yeah, the number uh, one seven one, January seven two thousand. So, uh, this was the rules on electronic evidence, right? AM number 0171. Let's remember that. Okay. So, yeah, let's go study the other parts of the coverage for next Thursday. Sorry, it's good. Uh, let's go to evidence. Let's go to object evidence. Let's go to rules of court. Object. Object as evidence. Objects are those addressed to the senses of the court. And then five senses. When an object is relevant to the uh, fact and issue, it may fact in issue, it may be exhibited or examined, reviewed by the court. Let's view the first case of uh, people versus Carrion. Okay, one zero eight seven. nabasa ko na yung sa DM yun. Wala siya. People versus Karyon. Well, let's see. If tama yun, tama yung GR na ano. Drugs case. Verify mo rin natin. Yung tama sa original. It's a drugs case. Look at the nine set, man. Nineteen seventy. Ninety one sixty five. So let's read. The the doctrine in people versus Carion. There is no rule requiring the apprending officer to personally deliver the Prohibited drug to the crime laboratory for testing. This is an outdated number 1972. What is important is that the transmittal of the specimen was not vitiated by irregularity or fraud to cast doubt on the authenticity of the subject specimen. Moreover, the subject marijuana leaves taken from the appellant were duly identified by C2C, as is a police vivera, the apprending officer, and the tenant on the chemist assigned at the Dangwa crime laboratory. So now, of course, the chain of custody is very important. But let's see in, in the drug law of 1972, which is drugs act. Okay. Around 2 o'clock in the afternoon, passenger jeepney 
in which here in the Pelant was riding was flagged down. So the, oh, this is incidental at a checkpoint manned by the Philippine Constabulary in Ifugao province. This was uh, an old case in 1990. In accordance with orders from their headquarters, the search was made on the jeepney. So this was incidental to the checkpoint. So the search was conducted by uh, a certain Rivera and Bulahaw, who was himself a passenger of the same jeepney, of which here in the parent and their companion were seated side by side. The bags and personal belongings of the passengers were individually searched by the constables. And as a result, there is a small wrap of marijuana found in the handbag of the appellant, while a larger bundle consisting of four wraps is found in a jute sack located beside them, approximately one foot away from him. So, it's a whole bit. Appellant and her companion were arrested. The seized items were all turned over to the provincial government. Upon investigation by the forensic chemist, the items seized from them were confirmed to be marijuana. The parent, together with the uh, Monteverde, a certain Monteverde, were subsequently charged with the violation of RA 6425 because there is no 9165 during that time. An arraignment, both entered not guilty, plea of not guilty. After trial, the court found the appellant guilty as charged with Monteverde. Uh, no. the, appellant, the parent was guilty, but the, the companion Monteverde was acquitted. So, appellant uh, Erlinda Carrion was charged with and convicted in Section 4 of RA 642. The appellant interposed the present appeal on the ground, insufficiency of evidence and erroneous admission and evidence of the marijuana, and failure of the trial court to give any probative uh, value to the supposed affidavit of desistance. Ah, yung matras pala, yung apprehending officers and her defense of denial. So, is she guilty? The ruling of the court? Uh, appellant harps on the failure, challenging the failure of the prosecution to present as evidence her handbag from where the marijuana leaves were taken, and assails the the police, uh, police's uh, inconsistency in the testimony, testimony where one party declared that the bag was turned over to the headquarters, while in another portion he said he took it. So there's inconsistency. The argument is unpersuasive. The appellant seems to have lost sight on the fact that her condition was not present on the presence of or absence of the bag but on her apprehension in fragrante delicto, caught in the act while in the possession of uh, prohibited drugs. The non-presentation of bag does not deliberate, deliberate, debilitate the case for the prosecution. The inconsistency is inconsequential. Importante, the testimony we notice unmistakably agree that the bag was for, forwarded to the provincial headquarters, where the apparent also took the same decision. Minor inconsistencies do not discredit but rather strengthen the testimony of the witness as they erase any suspicion of a rehearsed testimony. So, mas pabor para yun. Nagkakamari ng konti. Na hindi pinractice. The alleged insufficiency of evidence therefore is more imaginary. So, and then, appellant's affirmment, kahit na, despite that the bundles of marijuana were erroneously admitted in evidence, uh, failed because the officer failed to immediately submit the marijuana leaves for laboratory examination. In fact, it was not he who actually brought the specimen to the crime laboratory. Suffice it to say that there is no rule requiring the apprehending officer to personally deliver the drug for a crime laboratory testing. Now, there's no rule. What is important is that the transmission of the specimen was not vitiated by irregularity. And moreover, the subject uh, leaves uh, were were duly identified by, by the C, uh, by the police Rivera right? and the apprehending officer Ong. And also the, uh, no, no, the apprehending officer Rivera and the chemist is Ong, okay. Lieutenant Ong. In the absence of evidence to indicate that these witnesses were moved by improper motive, their testimony is entitled to full faith and credit. Wala namang nag na may motive sila na itiin yung tao. Besides the presumption of regularity in the conduct of their duties, for the law, uh, was not all overthrown by contrary evidence. So, guilty. Guilty um, suspect. Let's look at the original. Yeah. Life imprisonment, fine of 20,000. But such penalty is not favorable to the penalty. It carries accessory penalties. And it should not be given a retroactive effect uh, because of this. Depende, depende din ang fine din amount of 20,000. Hindi na pwedeng uh, pataasig pa yung fine yung parang siya. Just because of a new law. Okay? So, so, in case. 
is not so the doctrine that the lesson then is no rule na prehend the pending officer must deliver to the crime laboratory for testing what is more important is the transmittal of transmittal of the specimen which was uh, not vitiated okay so let's start with this let's go to the next case uh Balingit versus presentation of the evidence to the conclusion. So the balloon increase is coming. It's big, much on the journal. Autoptic preference in legal parlance simply means a tribunal self-perception or autopsy. Of the thing itself. It seems familiar. Pablo Yamat was declared the elected Punong Barangay, okay. garnering 257 votes against his opponent, Balingit, to obtain 250. It was a close fight. Balingit filed the protest before the uh, municipal circuit trial court of Makabebe, Masantol, Pampanga, alleging fraud in the counting and preparation of the election returns. The MCTC nullified 86 votes of Yaman previous on the grounds of fraud and it was alleged that 86 votes were written by the same person. So Yamat on the other hand appealed before the Comelec second division and the Comelec reversed the decision of the FCTC and counted the 80 votes of Yamat. It only nullified 6 votes which were found to be written by the same person. So namang parin siya ng 7 votes. Yamat was declared the winner. Balingit filed a motion for reconsideration to the Anbank which was denied. Balingit alleged the, that Comelec erred in this case. He quotes the MCTC's use of term autoptic preference. What is that? Autoptic preference in legal meaning, as we have read, simply means that the tribunal's self-perception or optimacy of the thing itself. So the opinion, tribunal self-perception. Whether or not Comelec and Bank committed reviews of, the, of discretion. So the Supreme Court ruled that the Comelec did not exercise grave abuse in this case. The appreciation of the contested uh, balance and the documentary evidence, object evidence. The appreciation of the contested balance in election documents is a question of fact that's left to the determination of the Comelec, which is a specialized agency for election. The Supreme Court states that contrary to uh, bullying its allegation, the Comelec and Bank conducted its own examination of all the uh, contested ballots and did not limit itself onto the six ballots that were uh, validated. Okay. The court also held constitution San Sebastian no Executive Council na second year na maging president. Anyway, the Supreme Court states that Contrary to Baling, its allegation and the petition, the Comelec and Bank conducted its own examination of all the uh, contested ballots and did not limit itself only to six ballots that were valid. The court also held that Comelec may not have used such an autophic preference. Term nevertheless, it does not uh, follow that it did not examine the ballots on the, the findings that were flawed. 
for going findings clearly show that the 86 contested ballots were physically examined by the government. And the basis for upholding the validity of 80 of these ballots was sufficiently established. The courts also cannot find any findings that FCDC's decision should outweigh the comments. Both tri tribunals physically examined the ballots and made their respective findings thereon. However, the divergence lies in the physical and actual appreciation of the perceived defects in the ballot. It not be stressed that given that Comelec is the specialized agency tasked with the supervision of the election, um, given by the framers of the Constitution, to place on a level higher than statutory administrative organs, its factual finding is binding on the court. As so the ballots presented as evidence, that was the object evidence, the Supreme Court upheld the decision of Comelec. Uh, correct, uh, the division correctly cited the resolution in Silveri versus Castro. In order to reach the conclusion that two writings are by the same hand, there must be not only be present class characteristics, but also individual characteristics or dents and scratches in sufficient quantity to exclude the theory of accidental coincidence. So, to reach the conclusion that writings are by different hands, and we may find numerous likeness in class characteristics, but divergence in individual characteristics. So we've, so, or we may find divergences in both, but the divergence must be something more than mere superficial differences. So, dapat ibang iba. Putting it simple, simply, where the writings in said ballots were strikingly alike, these ballots must be ruled to be of single authorship and must be rejected. Kung talagang parang pareho. The second division is right in its observance that the handwritings were glaringly different and no identical characteristics are impressive. Indeed, it would be justifiably be concluded that the cited ballots were each prepared by the individual voters and not in pairs or not only by one person. The rule is simple. Whatever features two specimen handwriting may have in common, they cannot be considered to be a common authorship if they display but a single dissimilarity in any feature which is fundamental to the structure of the handwriting and whose presence is not capable of reasonable explanation. Whatever perceived similarities were but pictorial effects and general resemblances which were insufficient to warrant the finding of single authorship of the six ballot. Thus, the Supreme Court affirmed the decision of the Andra and the six contested votes as a valid vote. Therefore, premises considered, okay, the court declared, yeah, as the rightful pool ng barangay. Six okay. That's the lesson there of the object and it was appreciated by the court. Okay. As regards to the handwriting signature, kailangan talaga ng divergence, you know, clear uh, difference with mere, mere similarity would not be sufficient to say it was given by one person. Okay. So let's have season versus people. This one, Rami Siso. Not this one. Okay, object evidence. Ito na yun. So, it's an invisibility of evidence. Two groups of loyalists converged where tension and animosity broke into violent community issues so in the murder. Formations for murder were filed and these cases were consolidated. The prosecution presented 12 witnesses including AMD. In support of their testimonies, the prosecution also presented documentary evidence. This is consisting of newspaper accounts of the incident in Garrett's photos. However, witness AMD stuck in identifying one of the accused for their defense, the principal of which denied their participation in the mauling. The CA, the CA found them guilty of murder qualified by abuse of superior strength. The question is, is the court correct in giving evidentiary weight to the photographs of the mauling incident? Yes, yes, yes. Witness A's mistake um, in identifying one of the accused does not make his whole testimony a falsity. Perfect testimonies cannot be expected from persons with imperfect senses. In this court's discretion, the testimony of a witness can be believed as to some facts and disbelieved with respect to others. Imperfect and foul. The rule is that when photos are presented in evidence, they must be identified by the photographer as to its production and testified as to the circumstances under which they were produced. Value lies in it being a correct representation or reproduction of the original. Admissibility determined by its accuracy in portraying the scene at the time of the crime. 
duplication of actors. The correctness of the photo can be proved from prima facie, either by the testimony of the person who made it or by other competent witnesses. Okay, so then, other witness. After which it can be admitted subject to its impeachment as to its accuracy. Therefore, the photographer or another competent witness can testify as to the exactness and accuracy of the both photograph. The SC ruled that the use of the photographs by the attorney for the appellants is an admission of the exactness and accuracy of such. That the photos were faithful, representations of the mauling incident was affirmed when appellants identified themselves in the pictures and explained their presence in said pictures. So, totoo. Namin yung nag was given heavy weight in that. So, kasag ba? This is Jill Walter. We'll continue with the case of People versus Estrabella. People versus Estrabella. I think this is the full case. Sa original copy. Now about 25th of October. Carnal knowledge that this is a rape case. So in the testimonies of the doctor, what is it, baby? What is it? Okay. What do you want to do there? Oh. I'm studying, baby. Si Lola mo na mag-play. Play gadgets. The result of the psychiatric exam and the person of the complainant was that the sentiment is a mental retarded, mental retarded, 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 whose age is 13 but her, but her age is just 6 or 7. The physical and genital examination. 
So there abrasion, healing abrasions because of bleeding. So congestion of the vestibular mucosa inflammation. Such irritation because of the sex organ of a male in erection. To have sexual intercourse with a man or about the alleged date of provision. But there was no complete penetration as the hymen was intact and elastic. Okay, so you know, Fernando Alcala brother testified that Romeo Estrabella, their neighbor, eh, is their neighbor. Eh? He saw the kiss under the house of uh, Cueva sitting for a long way. She was his pants open. He also saw the legs of a woman around the waist of the kiss with the latter making some movements. He not readily recognized that the woman was until he went to the closet and saw a few stand up. Di ko niya nakilala mo. Uh, kapatid niya. Okay. Recognized the female part of this was his mentally loved sister. Witness Fernanda immediately went to where the piece was and boxed him. His sister, who was frightened, ran away while the neighbors tried to pacify Fernando and Robbie Estrebelli. The latter was able to disengage himself from the former. So, narita pa lang kaya pala. Hindi natuloy. But another brother complained that Armando ran after Estrebelli was able to catch him. Two brothers then brought Douglas to the police precinct of Mandaluyo. Fernandez's testimony was corroborated by the van, another witness of the prosecution. So, parang, citizen's arrest. Okay. He's denied that he had sexual intercourse with the complainant through his testimony as the sole witness. Ano kaya yung object evidence? Panty or something. Maybe naman DNA. So, the defense accused alleged that he, while he was resting at the house of his godfather, Nino, around 3 o'clock. Joy suddenly arrived. He called her and later sat on the bench where he was sitting. He told Joy to go to the house of his sister to get his clothes as he was going. So, I don't know if he was Because she was asking money from him. While he and Joy were talking, her brother arrived and suddenly hit him. And in testimony, he was <coughs> down with Fernando. Until he fell down. They asked him why they hit him. But he used to see Joy Akla play with her private by inserting her to. And I think uh, Fifi Miller, itong retarded. In fact, whenever he saw her playing, he usually gave her a spanking. Mm-hmm. Appellant's defense is denial of the offense charge that he did not rape the complainant, supported by the findings of Dr. Maxim that there was no tear or laceration. For the argument that granting arguendo, but without admitting that the rape is committed, there is, however, no evidence that the complainant was forced or intimidated by the accused or it was taken against her will. It was mutually voluntary, as it did from the testimonies of Alcala, who testified to the effect that they did not hear any word or conversation between the two while performing the sexual act. Uh, Tenant's argument deserved no consideration. Why? Based on the medical and physical examination, Joy Alcala had a sexual intercourse with a man on 25 October, due to the presence of abrasion and congestion and bleeding in the genitalia. Condition consistent with the sex of the case. Physical evidence is the highest order and speaks more eloquently than all witnesses put together. Furthermore, such medical findings confirm the testimonies of Alcala. They saw Estrebelli having carnal knowledge and said, the house of, house of Paris. The fact that the hymen was not lacerated does not negate the crime of rape. Okay? That does not negate rape. We held that the penetration by entry of the lips of the female organ, even without the rupture of the hymen, suffices to warrant conviction for rape. That was ruled in the case of people versus Conchada. Okay? And also ruled in people versus Itak. Okay? It's established that uh, it was mental retardation. So, so what was the object evidence there? Okay? It was weak to intellect to extend that she is incapable of giving rational consent. In this type of rape, the employment of force or intimidation on the part of men and resistance on the, on the part of the woman are not essential because she was deprived of reason. In the instant case, the fact that the complainant did not offer any resistance did not mean that she consented and clearly uh, she could not comprehend the fun implications of the libidinous act. So really she deserved the protection of law. A second assignment did not acquire jurisdiction. We did not acquire principle. In this case, the bar while the woman may have been technical in the sense that it was incompetent, this defect has been cured. The complaint's brother took the witness for the uh, prosecution. The brother's testimony shows the consent and willingness of the family. You cannot give her consent, obviously, to have a private offense committed against the latter publicly tried. Hmm? 
na siya makakapag uh, consent na. No? Substantially, this is what is required by the rules. Evidently, by undergoing trial, the family of the convict chose to denounce the injustice committed against the latter in family. And that has thus agreed to bear the personal effects of such exposure. Undoubtedly, therefore, the trial court has jurisdiction. Ano ba siya sabi mo? Wala daw jurisdiction over the subject matter. The crime of rape. Hmm? In the second assignment of error, the penalty system of the trial court did not acquire jurisdiction. Before the complaint. Ah, because though the complaint was filed by a plaintiff was a minor and mental retardate. Provisions of Rule 110, uh, the rules of court, and Article 344 of the Revised Penal Code. The offended party, even if she were a minor, has the right to institute the prosecution for the above offenses, independently of her parents, unless she is incompetent. Uh, or in, the offenses of seduction, abduction, rape, or shall not be prosecuted except upon a complaint filed by the offended party or her parents. Oh, no argument. Okay. So, the course will settle the jurisdiction in the subject matter. In this case, rape is the subject matter. Be conferred only by law. And the jurisdiction over a given crime not vested by law upon a particular court may not be conferred or by the parties involved in the case. Of course, hindi mo sila makakapili kung sino may jurisdiction. That's Manila Railroad versus Attorney General. But the aforementioned provision of the Article 344 does not determine the jurisdiction of our courts. Over the offenses, they're in enumerated. So, sinasabihin. Okay. Only specific offenses. It could not affect said jurisdiction because the same with respect to the incident crime is governed by the Judiciary Act of 1948, not by the Revised Penal Code, which deals primarily with the definition of crimes and pertinent. Prosecutor said that it's merely a condition, condition precedent to the exercise by the proper authorities. It so has been imposed out of the consideration of the offended man. I would prefer to suffer the outrage in silence rather than go through with the scandal of a public trial. In the case of Marwell, they were going to go through it. They've been technically innocent that the complaint was incompetent, the defect has been cured when complaints of brother and so on. The defect was cured. But the, the rules in criminal procedure were saying that even if she were a minor, in the uh, right to institute the prosecution for the above, independent, unless she is incompetent, on grounds other than her minority. Uh, so it's sad because she's a minor. Okay. It's filed by contrary to the provisions of the hmm. It's good to the reason for me. It's not a good thing. I'm not going to do it. But it's in a side thing. Really? My love. Hindi daw kasi rape. Hindi kasi nagpo-fall yung rape dito. Seduction, abduction, and acts of lasigus. Yun ang inaaray mo at ang sabi ng court. But the, to be conferred only by law. Hindi mo masasabi ko. Hindi mo makipili ko sino ba ang may jurisdiction. It's still governed by the judiciary ako. May the revised bill. Ano ba si sabi ni Herr Perez, Grand Perez, or Guardian? Ano ba ang sinasabi yun ng brother? The defect has been cured. Yung constant willingness of the family to complain. Kasi nakakita eh. 
So maybe that's the case. Let's try the idea. Okay. Full case only. Okay. Last two cases, at least two so. The guilt of the accused must be proven beyond reasonable doubt. Of course, if the inculpatory facts are capable of two or more explanations, one which is consistent with the innocence and one which is with the guilt, then the evidence does not fulfill the test of moral certainty and it is not sufficient to support a conviction. Kung isa daw ay uh, nagkukonvict ang isa naman ay innocent, hindi pa rin. That's the case. A group of eight men entered the house of Laksamana and robbed the said premises. In the course of robbery, two members of the gang uh, raped her niece and another uh, employee. Okay, so robbery with rape. The accused appellant were charged with the complex crime of robbery and done with double rape. The trial court rendered judgment convicting all the accused. But only Bagas appealed. One of his contentions is that the court, the trial court's error giving due weight to the open court identification of him, which was based on a suggestive and irregular out-of-court identification. According to Badas, four days after the alleged incident, alleged incident, a group of policemen together with Federico and Patrick, who was then a suspect, went to his workplace. They were looking for a certain Mario. Failing to find Mario, the police hit on Patrick at the back of his neck with a gun and uttered, even though lang yata tayo ng tarong tarong, turo ka ng kahit sino. It was at the juncture that Ampatin pointed the uh, bagas as he was the person Ampatin chance to look upon. So, you remember that. They were brought to the police station for uh, Let me say bagas was brought out, complained that Laksaman asked him if he knew accused uh, Restuso in Vias. Bagas answered in the negative. The police told the complainant that uh, the accused was one of the suspects. This incited uh, complaints on emotional frenzy kicking and hitting him. He didn't know what that whether the manner of out-of-court identification was irregular and therefore inadmissible in court. So, it says yes, the complainant's out-of-court identification was seriously uh, flawed as to preclude its admissibility. Because you know, it's not a good thing to be able 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 Resolving the admissible in the reality of out-of-court identification, the totality of the circumstances that has to be applied, which lists the following factors. The witness, opportunity to view the criminal at the time of the crime, the witness degree of attention at that time, okay? the accuracy of any prior description, and the level of certainty demonstrated by the witness identification, the length of time between the crime and identification, and the suggestiveness of the identification process. So, what is it? The out-of-court identification. A criminal suggestion of hearing a police appearance by witness in the police station appears to have been improperly suggested even before the complaints had the opportunity to view the accused he, when he was brought to the detention cell to be presented for identification the police made a note that he was one of the suspects in the crime this claim that the identification was practically suggested by the police themselves the fact that this information came to the knowledge of the complainants prior to the identification based on their own recall of the Incident detracts from the spontaneity of the subsequent identification, and therefore its objectivity. The decision of trial court convicting Bagas with the crime is reversed and acquitted of the crime charge. So, yung out of court identification of each of you, yung object evidence, which is inadmissible in court. So, this is a chat, whether she's guilty or not. In sa kanina, no object evidence sa Estrabella. This is probably the, the the physical examination, the sexually, na yung genitalia niya. Okay, it's just mere abrasion and not laceration. Okay. Last case, people versus de la Cruz. Italian de la Cruz.
Okay. So the drug case again. People versus team. This court believes that the prosecution failed to clearly establish the chain of custody of deceased Shabu. Piotr Omoyo testified that he failed to place any markings on the sachets of Shabu immediately after the apprehension. In fact, Piotr Omoyo admitted Piotr that uh, further, furthermore, I think that in contrary, on record shows that the the procedural procedural requirements of Section 21 with respect to custody and disposition were compiled with complied rather. There was no physical inventory and photograph of the items allegedly confiscated from the appellant. Neither did the police officers offer any explanation. Okay, let's have an explanation for their failure to observe the rule. The prosecution really sought refuge in its belief that a stringent application of the rule may be dispensed. If the corpus delicti has been duly established, if the body of the crime has been established, this is Witnesses for the prosecution narrated that corpus delicti. Corpus delicti. Material evidence that is needed to, to sustain a conviction. Crime has been committed. Okay. The evening of July, a male informant came to the police at Northern Police in the presence of Pio Tribute. The informant complained about the rampant selling of Shabu. Said information was relayed to police chief, inspector, who immediately instructed the to form a by bus team. The by bus team underwent a briefing and then proceeded to the target area on board to separate the vehicles. They arrived at the parking lot along Ipon Lit in Nagatagat at 7 30. Whatever. Or Makma. A certain Makma. After two hours, the panel arrived with two male companions. The informant approached Appellant and introduced Pio to Amoy to him as a buyer of 200 pesos worth of Shabu. Appellant left for a while to get the Shabu from his companions, who were sitting seven, standing seven meters away from the group. He returned ten minutes later and handed two plastic scissors to, to Pio to Amoy. This exchange handed over the golden money. After the exchange, Amoy raised his left hand to signal the other members of the Bible that the transaction has already been concluded. And the uh, police arrested Amoy. Pellet while Amoyo ran after the companions. Okay. There was an exchange of gunfire between Amoyo and uh, an identified female, but the latter was able to escape uh, and scat. Scat boy. Escape. Unscathed. Unscathed. Uh, unscathed. 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 So. Uh, so to Moyo kept the two plastic sachets in his back. So it was really the two male companions were identified as Abay and Tapo. Appellant was then brought to the police at the quarters. And Moyo placed his markings on the plastics before turning them over, together with the by bus money, to SPO for George the Bayan. Moyo also prepared a request for laboratory examination addressed to the PNP crime laboratory. But Two plastic sachets containing the crystalline sums were found positive for Shabu. Said finding was indicated in the physical report by forensic chemist and police inspector Kalaw Bokal of the PNP Crime Reporter Group. The appellate court gave way to the testimony of the postal by as well as to the physical science report, including that the illegal sale of Shabu was perpetrated by the police. The appellate court rejected the parents' defense of frame up for failure to substantiate such allegation and in the light of Presumption of regularity. May presumption of regularity of police officers in the performance of their duties. And then the alleged failure of the police officers to observe the procedure laid down in Section 21 of 9165, the appellate court held that the such failure is not fatal but as the circumstances in the instant case showed that the integrity pertaining to the custody was not compromised, not been setting to the same, were marked only during the investigation held at the police. 
station defense in this case. The appellant maintains that the prosecution was not able to establish the moral certainty or certainty required by the law to prove his guilt beyond reasonable doubt. He contends that his defenses of alibi and denial were supported not only by his testimony but by that other uh, with, of other witnesses. So he questions the identity of the Shabu, you know, allegedly confiscated from him as the marking was made only in the police station in front of the investigating officer. Contrary to the requirement laid down uh, in Section 21, he also assumes the forensic laboratory examination result in that it was not covered by a certification in violation of Section 21 of the certification. He stresses that the prosecution must not simply rely on the presumption of the Java IP, for it cannot itself support the conviction. Well, it is meritorious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the elements necessary for the prosecution. You know, the identities of the buyer, the seller, the object, and the consideration. The object evidence intention to the delivery of the thing sold and the payment thereof. What is material to the prosecution for the illegal sale of dangerous drugs is the proof that the transaction for, of, or sale actually took place, coupled with presentation in court of evidence of corpus delicti, the body proof. The common issue that crops out of a buy bus operation like in this case is whether the drug submitted for laboratory was actually the one recovered from the appellant. The court is cognizant of the fact that an entrapment operation is open to possibilities of abuse. It's by the same trust that the chain of custody was adopted by the court. As a method of authenticating evidence, the chain of custody rule requires that the admission of an exhibit be preceded by evidence sufficient to support the finding that the matter in question is what the proponent claims to be. It would, be, it would include the testimony but every link in the chain from the moment the item was picked up to the time it was offered in evidence in such a way that the, every person who touched the exhibit would describe how and from whom it was received and where it was and what happened while it is in the witness possession and the condition in which it was received and the condition in which it was delivered to the next line in chain. These witnesses would then describe the precautions taken to ensure that there had been no change in the condition of the item and no opportunity for someone to, not in the chain, to have possession of so, Content. Well, testimony about the perfect chain, and not always standard. It's almost always impossible to obtain, and a broken chain of custody becomes indispensable and essential when the item of real evidence is not distinctive and is not readily identifiable, or when its condition at the time of testing or trial is critical, or when a witness has failed to observe its uniqueness. At the same time, the likeness of things in the case, uh, the evidence is susceptible to alteration, tampering contamination and even substitution and exchange. In other words, the exhibit's level of sus susceptibility to fungibility, alteration or tampering without regard to whether the same is advertent or otherwise not to face the level of strictness in the chain of command. Indeed, the likelihood of tampering, the loss or mistake with respect to an exhibit is greatest when the exhibit is small and is one that has physical characteristics fungible in nature and similar in forms informed to substances familiar to people in their daily lives. Fungible, substitutable, infungible to replaceable. I'm not ready. A unique porringer's food is that they are not readily identifiable as in fact they are subject to scientific analysis to determine the composition of nature. Thus, the corpus delicti should be identified with unwavering exactitude. The court believes that the prosecution failed to clear the chain of custody by the time it was received. So, okay. Furthermore, nothing other shows that the procedural requirements were complied with. There was no physical encounter in photograph or not. Not from that. Uh, neither did the police office offer any explanation for their failure to observe the rule. No. Quitted. No. Let's see the final rule. Object evidence, principal and criminal number two, and special team members. The person set aside. But that is a point. So that sums the rules. And object evidence. So, connotation of the system.
downloadable in this. Object evidence, which in this case. Rule one thirty. So that is it. Only she can be inserted. So bra forty. Fifty. Sixty. The senses are provided. Object evidence. Those are just listen. Object evidence are provided. The perception of the witness and the recollection of that person it is not a reconstruction of past events. Real or object, it is not a verbal description of something. It's a replica or a mere representation of something. Object or real, it is exactly what its name suggests. It is the real thing, like it said, like the knife used to slash the victim's throat, and the ring actually stolen by the accused, the bullet exactly from the chest, so on and so forth. Is it tangible things like a gun, a broken glass, a piece of plastic clothing? Go directly to the senses of the court, five senses, instead of relying on the recollection of the uh, witnesses. The, an object evidence will enable the court to have its first-hand perception of the evidence. The court wants to know whether the bolo is uh, long or short, big or small. The object evidence will be the bolo itself. Of course, it will have a persuasive. Just have a little bit of break. This.